Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. Um, today we're going to have a quick look at my new Etcher sketchbook which has just arrived for me to review for Etcher. Um, they very kindly reached out and sent me my choice of a sketchbook which came the other day all the way from England and uh, I haven't opened it yet but that's what we're going to do this morning and I'm going to share with you a couple of ideas on uh, using this sketchbook because it's not totally self-evident so I'm going to get this uh, plastic film that's on the outside off and uh, I've looked at a couple of other reviews on the internet there's lots of them out there lots of people have uh, filled up their sketchbooks and given some very interesting information on how they work so um, I'm going to share some of that with you first of all and then I'm going to have a go at painting from it so it comes very nicely packaged um, all the way from China paper I believe inside here they're not very clear about it is made in China Apparently it's made by a company called Baohong, which is the premier Chinese watercolour paper manufacturer. So that's useful to know. That's uh, point number one. Quick tip. If you're looking for good quality watercolour paper and you want to get a good price, have a look for Baohong water pa watercolour paper and I'll put information in the description below the video. So, okay, so inside here, is there anything else? Just a piece of uh, desiccant. Okay, so that's nothing. Put that in the bin. Put that aside because you could probably use this to store it in if you wanted to keep it clean. Because once we get the second coat of plastic off, of course it's white. And um, in the studio, certainly in my studio, white is not going to stay that way for very long at all. It might not even be white to start with. But I know they suggest that you can decorate this and paint on it yourself. So that might be something you might do. I think those Posca pens are supposed to be good for that, I've heard. Um, I'm not sure that I would put watercolour on it. I don't know if that would work. Maybe you could coat it with watercolour ground. Daniel Smith do a good watercolour ground. And um, this, is, um, this isn't canvas, this is 100% cotton. But it has a, a woven texture which... Um, would behave a bit like canvas. Acrylic I would probably use. I would probably um, give this a coat of ground to, water, to um, stop it being so absorbent. I've got Daniel Smith um, watercolour ground, which I think would be the best thing to put on that first, a thin coat of that, and then you could paint on top of it with watercolours, or you could paint on top of it with acrylics, and I would personally probably use acrylic, because I think that would be much tougher, and it wouldn't wear watercolour is going to rub off. Okay, so first thing I'm going to notice about this, actually, the spine is pretty stiff. I'm a bit worried about that cracking, actually, if you open that hard. So I'm going to have a look and see why, why is that happening. Okay, so it's bound like a book and there's no, uh, it doesn't open flat to push it okay so you can push it open At the beginning it's a bit tricky and it looks as if the paper it's not you can't tear it out so this is meant to be left in the book not like a pad of watercolor paper where you tear the sheets out and you'd have a serration down there this is um, stitched in in the traditional book binding manner with you see that with uh, cotton thread it's 
stitched. And if you look at it sideways on, you can see the, um, the sections all stitched in. And then presumably it's glued at the back and then the cover is glued on. Okay, and at the back there's a pocket which you could put your reference material in if you were um, using photographs or other printouts and things, you could keep them in there. Um, I think that's what I would use it for if I was uh, going to take this out traveling, I would probably put my reference material in there when I was out and about. And there's a little leaflet here telling us that it is an A4 sketchbook measuring roughly 8 by 11 inches. It has a cotton fabric cover. It is suitable for pen, ink, watercolour and gouache. And it is 230 gram paper as opposed to the usual that we recommend, which is 300 gram or 140 pound. This is, I think 230 is about 110 pounds. So it's a little bit lighter than the usual watercolor paper that we suggest you use, but I'm sure it will be fine. And then it has this little panel here, this sketchbook belongs to. And uh, there we are. So the first thing that occurs to me is that if you, are going to use this book to paint in everyday kind of thing, you're going to have to be very careful about the binding because if you paint up to the edge, the paint is going to bleed. It's going to bleed through this crack and it's going to come out on other pages, especially if you paint right to the edge. So I would seriously suggest when you come to paint in here, let's say this is the title page. So this would be the first page that you would be working on and enter stage left the etcher sorry the uh, washi tape i'm going to put around the edge of the paper like this and of course you'll take this off when you've finished the good thing about washi tape is that it is not very adhesive so it doesn't pull hopefully it won't pull the paper up when you come to take off the tape which you will when you're finished that will give you a nice clean edge if you go near to the edge. It will prevent the paint from going inside the spine of the... Whoops, I seem to be running out there. Oh dear. Um, it will prevent the paper from going into the spine, the paint from going into the spine of, uh, of the book and spoiling subsequent pages or previous pages, which would definitely not be a good thing. Okay, so... I just put that there. So when I come to paint on that page, I make sure that way that I get a clean edge. Not sure what I'm going to paint yet, but that's where I'll start. Now, as far as the paper goes, it doesn't have very much texture, to be honest. It doesn't feel rough at all. It's um, has a, an optical texture to it, but it's not, you can hear that, can't you? It's quite smooth. Quite smooth. Compared to that, for example, this is, this is, uh, I think this might be 200 pounds. It's quite thick, maybe 300 pounds. Not, and listen. much smoother than this. Interesting. So that's probably a good thing, especially if you do a lot of florals, because obviously uh, you might want, well, I think with florals, on the whole, you want a fairly smooth paper, not hot press, but you want a fairly smooth paper for that. And what I'm thinking is on the front page here on the, oh look, it's got a mark on it, that wasn't me. On the front page here, I think I'm going to put a little bit of calligraphy, and I might do that in another video, saying, um, I don't know, what does it suggest? It suggests here that you put 
the sketchbooks. The sketchbooks belongs to, I mean, come on guys. The sketchbooks belongs to, Jesus. Sorry, goodness me. Um, I'm going to write in my best handwriting, this book belongs to, and then I should put my name, and then I'll put a, a design around it. But I'm going to have to think about that a little bit before I start, so I won't do that now. Okay, so what are we going to paint here? Obviously some florals, don't you think? And this is a good opportunity to do a quick doodle and see what happens. Um, I was thinking, I have been thinking about doing water lilies. And um, I don't know, I've got water lilies on the brain at the moment, don't know why, I haven't got a pond. Um, and so I was looking at some of these things. This is, uh, this is what started me off with the, um, we did some decoupage the other day. These are photocopied water lilies that I put on a background that I'd done earlier. Just sat them there, you can see those are my scissors, so I know it was me. And just playing around, and then these are different images, that's a photo. These are photos of water lilies that I've downloaded um, off of Google, off the internet. All sorts of different designs, and I was thinking um, it would be nice to do water lilies in a transparent watercolour style. And I haven't got much further than that. And my question is now, of course, can I break into this wonderful sketchbook from which I cannot remove the pages with something which is experimental? And the answer has to be no, I can't do that. That's the big problem for me anyway. This is a nice tape to save your place. Um, yeah, I mean, they talk about the blank page syndrome. What about the empty sketchbook syndrome? This, I've got what other ones here. Um, I want to show you. Here we go, look at that. This is a sketchbook. And look, what ha look, look what's happened to it. I've never used it, but I've had it so long, I don't know if it's got a date on the back. Oh, I think I might have used a couple of pages. That's another thing I do, I tend to start at the back. But look. This is an example of paper yellowing with age. Now, I am not that old. This book is probably 20 years old. Imagine if I had painted in this and the paper had aged like that. And we don't only have to imagine it because we can see, because I realized I did paint at the other end. Look at this. That is a painting I did in Aden, in the Yemen, in, and I know exactly when this was because it was the year I got married. And I've been married 30 years to my not first husband. So 30 years away from 2021, 1991. 1991 in Aden. And look at, the, look at the state of the paper. It looks like it's Victorian. And that's another one, same place. That was Aden as well, 30 years ago. And that one. That's the harbour. There was old um, frigates and things moored out in the harbour. I haven't looked at this probably for about 20 years. And that's all there is. And what I had done was I cut out little frames for the paintings from other paper and just put those in to cover, to cover. You see, this is a mount that I had stuck on top of the painting inside the paper. That's a good idea, isn't it? But the paper has yellowed, so it's unusable. Anyway. I've forgotten about those pictures. We should do some watercolour landscapes like this, shouldn't we? Okay, so i tell you what we'll do for the end of this. Since we've gone through one sketchbook, I'm afraid to start my extra sketchbook. 
I'm going to go through the sketchbook that we've done together over the last couple of weeks. I'm going to show you also what I did with the um, uh, decoupage painting of the butterflies that we did the other day. I've actually used it to cover this new sketchbook, which has nothing in, nothing in it yet. But that is transformed a uh, boring cover. I've re re um, bound it, put a new cover on the top. So that's a good way to use your decoupage if you've done one. Okay, so over the last couple of weeks, we have done this. This is my sketchbook from uh, April to June, 2021. We did uh, dragonflies. All of these are videos um, that are available on here, on YouTube. We did the three little birds on the twig. And we did the um, teacup with the dragonfly and the strawberries. And we did the poppy in the meadow with the dragonfly and the bee. And we did the fairy with the bluebells. And we did the foxglove with the bee. And the laburnum. And these are all my preparatory sketches for the paintings that we do on the videos. Then we did the three cute little birds with the um, uh, iridescent medium, which was so cool. And um, I really liked that one. I think that was better than the one we did on the video. It's really sweet. So you can freeze frame there and paint that. <laughs> the most underrated painting that I've done so far, my beautiful little seahorse which has had fewer views than he deserves. He is so cute and so easy and makes good use of the iridescent medium. So everybody, please go and have a look at him. He's waiting to be painted. He's a mother to be, and he's waiting to be painted. See what you can make of him. The best one of these that comes up on the group in the next month gets a free something from Etcher. And then we have a hummingbird on a bower. Another flower meadow doodle. My favorite page of all, I love this pink and quinacridone gold. Here's a quick thing. Um, quinacridone gold blends with all these different shades of pink and red to make the most glorious combinations of peachy and apricotty shades for your flower doodles. So do go ahead and get yourself a tube of that. It's not expensive and everyone should have some. It's marvelous. It lifts your paintings up into the highest atmospheres. Then there is lavender, which I did with um, quinacridone purple, which is a ditto thing. Everything I say about this one is true about this one, except this is more versatile. It mixes with more things than that. And then I did some swatching of different colors for a painting I was preparing. That was a quick doodle of a hair, quick doodle of some birds. And this was the elderflowers with the birds stuck on as a, another preliminary to the decoupage. A yellow uh, bird there, that is an American goldfinch. All of these are videos um, on YouTube here. That was just a pen and ink sketch that uh, was preliminary to another video. And we have some butterflies. which you could also copy. I don't think I've done, this has not been done as a video. This was me playing. And then the chickens, preliminary sketch. Um, sketch for the titmouse on his poppies. Swatching out the colors for the titmouse. This is the wisteria. That was the sketch, original sketch for the lemons, which had just gone up this week. 
here's another sketch that I'm considering and I'd be very interested to see those of you who've got this far in the video if anyone be interested in having a tutorial for this painting which is a lemon tree outside a Spanish house and um, I tried that out I've done the painting of this as well I've got the original somewhere well actually I sold the original but I've got the print and it's, it makes a nice painting so if anyone would be interested in that if I get at least 10 votes from in the comments below then I will do a video for that and this was just some practice roses for the video on roses that we did the other day here are some poppies different ones from the ones that we've done and that's the end of that so there we are that's a quick summary of what we've done over the last month or two and I hope you enjoyed that and I'm going to let you go now and I hope to see you here again soon tomorrow. I mean tomorrow, not soon, tomorrow. Tomorrow will come when tomorrow comes, if it does. Um, thank you very much for being here. Please leave comments on anything that you've seen here, my old paintings in my very, very old yellowed sketchbook, the Etcher sketchbook and the sketchbook that I've just uh, created for myself and filled this last couple of months with the work that I've been doing. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for being such wonderful supporters because you're making me paint in a way I've never painted before. So thank you for that. And I'll say goodbye for now. Bye everybody. Bye bye.